Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to share with uh, the word about Jehoshaphat. What's the meaning of Jehoshaphat? What's the main issue of Jehoshaphat? The Jehoshaphat, Yahuwah, the judge. God is going to judge on the final day when Jesus comes again. It is. It will be happen between two mountain tops. Okay, look at the photo. Left one, snow cap, twin mountain tops. Okay, that's the mountain Ararat. And about another Shechem. Shechem was located between two mountain tops. Mountain Ebal, Mountain Gerasim. And this Shechem is the place where Joshua made renewal of the Sinai Covenant at Shechem. Okay, this mountain Ararat also, Noah, Noah made a covenant with God. Then the Ark of Noah was landed on this mountain Ararat. Okay, well, whenever someone make covenant in the name of God, uh, this is a tradition, they make covenant between two mountain tops. Okay, number two. What's the significance of number two in the Bible? That's the number of witness of God. Okay, whatever we are doing important things, then we must invite the witness watching of witnesses. So this is the uh, the concept of foundation of making covenant. Okay, this mountain also has two mountain tops is a Hebron. It has spiritual secret. Twin mountain tops, okay, uh, is a, another has meaning. So it's, it it is the holy place. Every holy place in the promised land, in the holy land, uh, they are always you see always twin tops. Hebron was sanctified by Abraham. Abraham, as he entered into this Hebron, he built up the altar. It means he made this Hebron as a worship place, means holy place. And the Zechariah, in the book of Zechariah 6, 1, and the Zechariah saw the vision, two bronze mountain tops in his vision. It is located in heaven. It is located in the Tsapon, in the far north area. Two, between two bronze mountain tops, and then angels of chariot, they are coming out. They are going to wage war, the war of judgment of God on the earth. Okay, so what they are doing, judgment, and then he summoned the witness of two mountain tops. Kithran Valley. Okay, it is located between Mountain Olive and Mountain Zion. Mountain Zion. Okay, it is called Jehoshaphat Valley because in the Bible, the Joel and Zechariah, the Jesus is going to stand on the last day to give judgment between two mountain tops okay okay the final judgment is going to happen in between two mountain tops okay this jehoshaphat valley called also kidon valley the upper segment near the temple mount okay the valley separate the temple mount from the mount of olives it connects to the Judean desert and the Dead Sea and descending, descending 1,012 meters low, and then 32 kilometers long. The upper course is called Emek Yehoshaphat. Emek means the valley, valley of Yehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat. It is the place where the judgment of Messiah will be happened. 
Okay, we are going to learn about the main issue of God's judgment. It is to defend the course of the fatherless and the poor widows, which has been neglected by the rulers. So the Lord is, is going to deal with economic issue. Because of economic issue, the people commit sin and the rulers are neglecting to defend the poor widows. There is a sharp comparison between wicked human judges and the righteous judges, the God, our Savior in the Bible. So we must understand that the meaning of Jehoshaphat according to the ancient picture letter. Okay, this ancient picture letter shows main issue, main concern of the God's judgment. According to ancient Hebrew of Shapat, Shapat means to judge or literally he judged. Jehoshaphat, the Lord judged. It is interpreted in the future tense. God is going to judge. It can be explained as follows. Okay, the Shapat, the, the language Shafat consists of three consonants, Shin, Pe, Tet. The Shin, the picture of Shin is the W, so it's a woman breast. Simplified, the picture of woman breast. It means woman, but the, there are many kinds of woman. It could be mother, it could be wife, but according to this context, it could be poor widow. Okay, Pe. It's a shape of mouth, moving mouth, then meaning mouth. And then <clears throat> it could be understood as to eat or to kiss or to speak. Okay, tet. Tet is the food container, basket with a cover. Okay, whenever food is contained, it is covered because uh, it should be protected. If it is open, it might be defiled. It might become the unclean food. Okay, so how to understand the meaning? You, we try to combine. Number one, it is telling about the concept of fair judge or the main issue of fair judge. It is to make a poor woman, okay? Poor woman make by by giving fair judgment, it makes a poor woman shin to eat pear the food clean food. Okay, number two, another attempt at the interpretation. The right judgment concept, the right judgment. Okay, it is to speak, speak pear. We speak for whom? For woman. For whom? For poor widow, so that she may eat the food. Okay, the poor widow they suffer being hungry. What is the righteous judgment? God protect, God defend the poor widow, poor people, so that they may eat food. It is necessary. It is the foundation of survival. Okay. Uh, are guilty or innocent. Okay. As you stand before the seat of God's fair judgment, are you going to be are you going to be guilty or are you going to be innocent? Okay, you must have two witnesses who are telling you are innocent. Okay, do you have two witnesses who can stand for your innocence? about the use of your money. Okay, so remember, the main concern of God's judgment is about money, is about food. How, how you, you're, make, you're making the budget, financial budget, how you are going to use your food stops. Okay, whenever you use your money, you're eating it by God, you're eating it by angels. Okay, in here, two mountain time is watching over you. 
absorbing you, and they're under their judgment, they are telling about your being innocent or about your being guilty. The reason of God's judgment, okay, why a widow offer a persistent prayer in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. The, the, a poor widow offered persistent prayer to God. Okay, Jesus said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. Okay, repeat. Grant me justice against my adversary, against my enemy. Okay, Exodus 22, 22, written. Do not take advantage of the widow or the fatherless. Deuteronomy 24, 19, 20. When you are harvesting, leave forgotten sheaf of grain and olives for the foreigners, the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you. Okay, God always watching over God, care, take care of the poor people whenever they are suffering food. God looking down on them. Okay, Proverbs 31 9. Speak up. Okay, this is the word toward rulers and the judges. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the right of the poor and the needy. This is the will of God. The root of sin is that people love money more than God. Covetousness is the motive of injustice. Do you agree? The root of sin is the money love, love, love for money. Because of money, you know, they neglect their duty. Because of money, uh, they ignore sharing your food with the poor people, using your money, budget, budgeting your money to share the mission fund. Okay, Matthew 25, 31 to 40. Jesus taught us about the final judgment. Jesus is going to separate sheep and the goats. Okay, it is written. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you, for you. Since the creation of the world, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did you see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? The king will reply, King Jesus will reply, Truly I tell you, Whatever you did for one of these least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Okay, Jesus said, they are mine. Poor ones, poor brothers and sisters, they are mine. It means God pay close attention to the suffering people. Okay, now God is expecting his beloved disciples to take care of them on behalf of God. Okay. Rulers, unfaithful rulers, un unfaithful uh, judges, they are neglecting, but the disciples of Jesus Christ must take care of them on behalf of God. Okay, now uh, let me explain the very much important letter here. Take your inheritance, okay? This is the reward of the disciples of Jesus. We are going to take the inheritance, what okay, kind of inheritance? kingdom it is called the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world okay at this moment i remind of the promise of jesus in the the summer of the mount it is called in this way 
blessed are the meek blessed are the meek uh, for they will inherit the earth inheritance referring to the earth you may imagine the land a country vast land promised land blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth okay who are going to receive a land spacious land the new kingdom those who are meek what's the meaning of the meek who has generous eyes who has kind kindness in taking care of poor people okay they are the meek the here what kind of kingdom we must imagine here the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world time from the time of creation it means god prepared the inheritance for us for christians the name of inheritance is the kingdom so what kind of kingdom we must imagine okay the in the book of revelation jesus said the one who are faithful is going to rule rule in the millennium kingdom they are going to rule together with me in the millennium kingdom it means uh, the faithful disciples they are the kings they are going to rule together with jesus christ uh, it means uh, one king should be assigned to one kingdom one king should be assigned to one nation one country okay at this moment i imagine the the, the deeper meaning of the children of god okay uh, when god encouraged abraham god invited abraham to come out from the house and then look up to heaven during the night and see the many stars can you count I try to count and he, the abraham began to count oh oh lord there are too many to count and then god promised god clearly said the your descendant will be numerous like uh, heavenly stars okay the, each children of god compared to twinkling star in the sky so we are familiar with the tv star and movie star singing star or, or who are the real stars they are the faithful christians they are going to shine on earth okay so uh, at this moment i must remember the numbers of stars the numbers of planet numbers of stars in this universe there are so many so many there are so many stars created by god and then for what and somebody say oh god made too many stars too many in the planet in universe and then if you think only the earth now we are living only the earth is useful only the earth human being can live on only the earth has a condition so that animals and human being can be survived in this planet the earth does it mean so many other stars god made them for decoration only well couldn't there be any necessity okay whenever god made something god has purpose compared to this the word the kingdom the inheritance so god really promised there is a mansion in heaven okay the the righteous one the faithful one is going to enter into the heavenly kingdom there's a heavenly abode clearly god said there is a heavenly abode there's a heavenly mansion in the bible so it means aside from this earth there's another another place the chosen people 
save the people may enter into there. And Jesus said, the faithful one is going to be a ruler together with Jesus Christ. So uh, this is my, uh, my happy guess. This is my happy guess. So faithful one is going to be assigned to take care of each different planet, each different stars. Uh, it is possible. Okay. Uh, here, the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So it means faithful Christians uh, has the rulership. The faithful Christian uh, must take care of the people. There are many people who need, who need, who are suffering, who are in suffering. They need the, somebody's help. But mature Christian must be the caretaker for them. Okay. Uh, what do you imagine? What's the place is it? This is Jerusalem, okay? Uh, you see the Golden Dome. This is the temple site on the top of the mountain Zion, mountain Zion. And then from the mountain Zion, you come down. In the middle of this photo, there is a line. This is a Kidron Valley. And then this valley area is called Jehoshaphat. This Jehoshaphat located between mountain Zion, mountain top, and then this front part, this front part is a foothill of the Mountain Olive. Okay. Mountain Olive and then this Jerusalem, Zion, Mountain Zion, they are facing each other. Uh, it is consists of twin tops. So in this way, it's a holy place. In between twin tops, the place of Jehoshaphat in the middle, you know, along the fortress, along the wall of the Jerusalem city, and then from this wall up to the just below the graveyard, it is called Jehoshaphat. You know, you know. Do you see the many bricks, square bricks, square stones? You know, they are the tombs. They are the grave. The faithful Christians, faithful God believers, they made their tomb here under the foot of Mount Olive. Why? What do they believe? Because they believe in the, on the day of Jesus coming again. Okay, in the book of Zechariah, in the book of Joel, it is written that Jesus will be standing on the mountain top of the, the Olive Mountain. And then, at that time, the enemies Assembled enemies, they enter into this Joshua Valley. They, they are planning to attack Jerusalem, Holy City. So this is Joshua Kitron Valley. Uh, this is the path of the enemies. The enemies, they enter through this area in the middle of the Kitron Valley, Joshua Valley. That they are entering into, they are about to attack Jerusalem city. But the moment Jesus going down and standing over the mountain top of the olive, the Lord will cause a strong earthquake. Strong earthquake will make division, deep chasm between this northern part and southern part. So uh, this is Kidron Belly. There's a, there's, you draw the line. This horizontal Kidron Valley in this in this picture, there's a strong, there's a uh, horizontal line, okay, horizontal line. But when the land is divided by strong earthquake, uh, it's a vertical line. Vertical line, the deep pit is made because of strong earthquake. The land divided for what? So that the enemy cannot cross over. 
that big chasm. It is to protect holy people. Even God used earthquake to protect his holy people, his faithful people. Okay? And then the enemies will be destroyed by earthquake. They will fall into this pit, deep pit made by earthquake. So this is the judgment of God. Whenever God judges, the two different effects are happen. And, uh, for the wicked, they will be killed. For the righteous, here, the sleeping Christians who died earlier than Jesus Christ, uh, earlier than the second coming Jesus Christ, they are going to experience general resurrection. Okay? For the blessed one who died in Jesus Christ, they are going to re experience general resurrection. They will welcome Jesus Christ. Okay, they enter into new era, new blessed uh, time. It is called uh, Kairos. According to Greek language, there are two different concepts of uh, time. Human time, flowing chronological time is called Kronos, but there's another time. Time of God's intervention, time of God's judgment, it is called Kairos. Now, the time of God's judgment, it is called Kairos, God's intervention. Kairos, but God intervened to, to protect His people, to give beautiful rewards for His blessed people. That's the result of Kairos. Okay? Whenever we are uh, hearing the bad news about the earthquake, the typhoon, and the, any tragedy, then we, we are imagine, oh, we are nearing to final judgment. Without imagine, without uh, thinking, receiving reward, receiving resurrection, receiving resurrection to enter into eternal kingdom. Okay? I want you to have the positive image of the God's judgment. The, for the righteous, for the faithful, <clears throat> we are going to experience, we are going to receive the beautiful reward, the kingdom as our inheritance. Okay, now it is written in the book of Joel 3, 2. I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people, <clears throat> Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. 16. The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. Okay, on the day of God's judgment, the Lord will be a refuge for His people. The Lord will be a stronghold for the people of Israel. This is the blessing we must expect, we must desire. In verse 19, but Egypt, enemy nation, will be a desolate. The Edom, one of the enemy nation, will be a desert waste because of violence done to the people of Judah. In whose land they shed innocent blood. Okay. God remembers every innocent blood. God remembers every wicked the judge, every unrighteous judgment. Okay. When Jesus comes again, when Jesus the stop to judge the whole world, then we are the one who must be standing and who must welcome the coming of Jesus Christ, then who must receive the beautiful reward from Jesus Christ. And now, as we hear bad, the bad rumors, terrible the news about earthquake and then strong rain shower and then tsunami and then every Every the wicked things, 
then then we believe we think we are nearing to the final moment of human history but uh, we, there's no need to be feared there's no need to be worried then something good is going to happen to the people of God okay so have hope in Jesus okay, be courageous we are going to have final victory with Jesus Christ okay have a good day. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom.